Welcome to MSU Tonight. I am your host, Drayton Charlton Perrin. And I'm your host, Isaac Gallimore. We have a great show planned for you tonight, don't we, Isaac? Indeed we do. Stick around for MSU Tonight. Tonight's show is coming at you from all angles. We got a music fest, a frat boy beauty pageant, sports, and a brand new segment that might get me canceled before my career even starts. Right now though, it's time for Hot Topics. Attention all music lovers, join us for the Festival of Champions here at Murray State University on September 28th. This event showcases the best marching bands from across the region. Witness thrilling performances, vibrant displays of musical excellence, and experience the energy of competition. Don't miss this day of high-octane entertainment, fun, and music. Grab your tickets now and be part of the unforgettable celebration. For more information, go to murraystatebands.com. This past Friday, Alpha Omicron Pi hosted their annual philanthropy event, Mr. MSU, and it was a night to remember. Taking place in Lovett Auditorium, the 43rd annual show this year, themed Mamma Mia, had a fantastic lineup of contestants. The event was a showcase of impressive talent here on Murray State campus and raised crucial funds for a great cause over the course of the week. And on the night of the event, Alpha Omicron Pi fundraised over $26,000, which will be donated to the philanthropic partners, the Arthritis Foundation, thanks to the hard work of the AO Pi sisters and the support of the MSU community, the evening was a resounding success. The CFSB Center is undergoing renovations, and Zach Simmons met with Athletic Director Nico Yanko to learn more. Murray State Director of Athletics Nico Yanko announced plans to renovate the CFSB Center at the Board of Regents retreat this past Thursday. Yanko credits both investors and fans for helping support this new vision. We haven't been shy to announce this or describe this either, but in the new world and the new reality of, of college athletics, uh, Murray State basketball is certainly going to be our North Star as we continue to navigate these things. And it's no more important than any other sport on our campus, but it has to eat first because it helps feed everything else. Uh, and for us, you know, these renovations and this vision for this renovation, uh, you know, really comes from a lot of great investors who are really bought into investing in the sport program. And as I've met with Dr. Jackson over my 24 months of employment, but coming back home, right, uh, we knew that we needed to elevate what we provided here at the CFSB Center. And for us, uh, it's leaning into new premium offerings, enhancing the entertainment value. Uh, we've already brought on new elements such as the uh, LED uh, lighting structure that creates a lot of different activation on game days. Uh, but we knew that we had something special here. And if you draw a 30 to 50 mile radius around Murray, Kentucky, you know, this is truly the entertainment hub of this region. And we had to lean into that as we were thinking through this process. Premier seating, a retractable student section to allow for concerts and graduation, and much more are in the works for the renovation. I, I would say it's probably been the better part of, of the past 10 to 12 months that we are really hone in on these concepts and the ideas around the bunker, the bunker clubs and the courtside super suites and the loge box rendering. And then in addition to that uh, is the, the practice facility, if you will, or the performance center underneath, which will be one of the largest, if not the largest, dedicated space to a basketball program specifically, uh, which is going to allow us to grow into from a staffing size uh, space, uh, new weight rooms, uh, enhanced athletic training spaces. A lot of what is in our current existence has been around for nearly 30 years. So this is a, a lot of work in the making, but we're really excited to unveil this. Yanko also has a plan to allow fans, former players, and donors to show their support for racer athletics outside of the arena. If you look you know, just in front of me here in the entry to our uh, CFSB center, there's a current circle lot, and actually the naming rights to this just got approved by the Board of Regents um, to name it after Leon Owens, 
uh, the Winter Circle Drive, and, and, and part of the Performance Center will be named after him. But a part of that is a grassy knoll area that we're looking at exploring ways to uh, really level that area and help tell our story, right? As you come into what, you know, Dr. Jackson and I refer to athletics as the front porch. Well, if that's the front porch, well, this section here is our driveway mm -hmm. yeah. to the front porch. And we've got to tell our story to where you, when you pull into town, you're going to, you're going to know who Murray State is. So an ability to, yeah, have bricks out there where folks have an opportunity to purchase or make some memories or leave some memories behind and etch it in stone, right? Etch your legacy, if you will. Yeah. All the while shaping the story of so many racer greats that have come here from uh, you know, Joe Folks to Popeye to Cameron Payne to Isaiah Cannon to John Morant and, and future racers, right? We want a room for grow here. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to really showcase um, some special pieces to our history here as we continue to lean forward into renovating uh, the bank, as we call it. Anywhere from two years away to, you know, we, we don't know, but the reality is, is it is a reality. This isn't just, uh, these aren't just images. We're moving forward with this for the first time after probably nearly 30 years of discussions on this. And I think that's what folks need to continue to focus on is we are forward focused here as an athletics department and our fan base continues to be partners of, of ours and investors of ours in this vision for excellence, uh, elevating racer basketball and all of our sport programs. For Murray State tonight, I'm Zach Simmons. Last Saturday, local rock group High Noon Moon played near Roy Stewart Stadium for students and their families before the football game. While the rain added certain difficulties for the band, drummer Wesley Peru was hopeful that audience members and passersby enjoyed their performance. Came on a little late, but you know the crowd was just showing up as we got kicked off, so it worked out really well. Um, saw a bunch of people walk by. I hope they liked us. But yeah, Murray State gave us an opportunity and we appreciate it. The band expressed gratitude to Murray State for the opportunity to play at this year's Family Weekend and hopes for more live music opportunities in the future. And after the break, we have an interview with Duck Conservation. Hi, I'm Natalie and welcome back to Clubs on Campus where we spotlight some interesting clubs from Murray State. In the studio today, I'm joined by two members of the club Ducks Unlimited, Kirsten Piercy and Duck Pritchett. During our time together, we will be eating warheads after every question or basically every 20 to 30 seconds. Are y'all ready for this? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, Ben. Yes. What is your role in Ducks Unlimited? My role in Ducks Unlimited is that I am the area chairman. I Callaway County as I am the person who deals with everything Ducks Unlimited associated with and then I answer to the higher people that lead the state. I lead the Murray State University chapter as well and we work on raising money for ducks for conservation. Kirsten, mm -hmm. what do you do? Um, I'm the marketing side of things, so I make all of the social media posts and the flyers you see around campus, and I send out the letters to recruit people and the letters to the businesses that we want to donate for the banquet. So let's eat our first warhead. Okay. I know, Kirsten, you said that you have never had I have not, before. and I hate sour stuff. Okay. This will be perfect. So. So. I didn't even get it open. No. Oh, <laughs> that's really bad. And you can just toss them down. Mm. Okay, so what is Ducks Unlimited really about? Um, Ducks Unlimited, we are a organization that was put together back in about 1937 on trying to improve duck populations throughout North America. Me that includes Canada and Mexico as well as the United States. We were originally put together because duck hunters saw a declining number in waterfowl populations in, like I said, about 1937, and they wanted to do something about that so people can experience waterfowl, ducks, geese, swans, and everything else throughout the next 100, 100 years, 200 years, and it turned into our motto, 
our goal is to fill the skies of today, tomorrow, and forever. Very, very cool. What do you, what do you do during each club meeting? Um, I take notes, um, make sure that everything's in order. I am less uh, knowledgeable about like the conservation side of things, but I'm better at organizing the actual meetings and stuff like that. Let's eat our next warhead. Oh girl, still got this one in my mouth. Yeah, this is gonna get pretty painful. Okay. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, so what do you do during each meeting, like meeting to meeting? And that's for either? Um, meeting to meeting, we discuss uh, different events that we want to get going. Like every year we have a annual dinner banquet, which is a big money maker for us because we also have a live auction, silent auction, and a raffle that go along with that, that people come in and they just to help support. And so we have a bunch of items that are raffled off and auctioned off. Then we also have different events that we try to get going throughout the year, like hunt tests for, that we partner with the Hunter Retriever Club in Paducah, and uh, a couple other little things at the university. Very cool. Do you guys do anything at LBL? We want to start a volunteer group. Um, we're not really sure what we want to do or where we want to go with that yet. Um, we need more people to be interested. Um, we have a lot of members that are really involved in the club though. That's really, really good because this is uh, the only the second year it's been back on campus. Um, but yeah, we do a lot of um, like, we want to start um, marketing towards not only like hunters and stuff, but like people that are more interested in like um, other aspects of it as well. I'm gonna come back to that in a second. Are we ready for our next forehead? I still have the first two in my mouth. So as far as hunting and conservation, do they really truly go hand in hand? Like what's the history there, especially in this area? Um, I would say hunting and conservation do go in very hand to hand because hunters realize the need for conservation and they understand their part in conservation as well. We as hunters also try to keep populations from getting overnumbered. Like in Western Kentucky, we see a lot of deer and one of the reason we, reasons why we don't even have more deer is due to hunters and our ability to try to keep populations in check. And w with that, they also n understand the need of, hey, certain species are being lost, and so let's put money and effort into those species to try to bring their numbers back as well. Well, thank you for joining me here today. <laughs> Um, that's about all the time that we have. Thank you for both talking with me, but one last thing. Anybody that's interested in joining, where would they find you on campus or your socials? Um, okay, well, um, we are on Instagram and Facebook, uh, Murray State Ducks Unlimited. Um, the like profile picture is like duck head green background, I think. Um, we meet almost every Tuesday in the engineering and physics building on campus, um, room 2305. And we are, um, any like big recruitment table event thing on campus, we have a table there as well. Thank you. When we come back, we will go to Drayton for prompter problems. Greetings and welcome back to MSU Tonight. The only newscast broadcasted with express permission from your local bartender. Because God knows you didn't have anything better to do with your evening. We'd like to welcome you all to a brand new segment here on the show. Fresh off the line from our stolen ideas department, 
Special thanks to Chris Haynes for the lack of money in our budget, which reminds me, folks, it's never too late to donate to our station. With just a short phone call, you can ensure that your hard-earned money can be put towards fueling the pathetically subpar antics of nine college students who can't be bothered to thank you. Your donations will be put towards such important causes as new Wolverines for the men's room, a lifetime supply of Carolina Reapers, and nuclear warheads for the camera crew, and the drug habits of homeless vets we find in the alley out back. Remember, only you can give daddy that sweet, judgment-free China White in the news today. The latest studies in climate control suggest that unless each American increases their carbon footprint by 20%, we may never be able to achieve the sunken city of Cuba. Luckily, Jeff Bezos has assured the American people that he plans on spending $2.5 billion to the hawk to a girl, to the, to the surface of the sun, wasting more than enough of our natural resources to cover the job. Better grab your snorkels, Cuba. In other news, my mother called today and let me know that her new dog has officially taken my place in the family tree. Later on, we'll see if he's got the paws to give mother a perfect oatmeal foot massage. Like I have for the last 15 years, if not, bye bye to Poochie and a warm welcome back to my bedroom in the cellar. Can bathing in mercury improve your health? College students across the country have been testing this latest trend after hearing from a third grader in California that extreme contact with the element can actually halt the aging process indefinitely. So far, it's been two weeks, and none of the influencers who've tried the viral trend have reported back with the results, which can only mean they're hoarding the remedy to aging from the rest of us and are somewhere living their immortal lives to the fullest. Well, to them I say, have lots of fun for me. Mankind has been to Earth's outer orbit. We've landed on the surface of the moon. We've even sent a rover to Mars. And now the founder of Virgin Galactic, Richard Branson, has declared he's going to plant his feet on Uranus. In a press conference held this past Friday, Mr. Branson said it's always been a dream of his to have Virgin Galactic be the first to touch Uranus. He plans on planting his flag on the highest hills and in its deepest crevices to let the whole universe know just who rules Uranus. While some people may think that it would be better to have a musk on Uranus, others believe that the first to make contact with the big blue planet should be our Richard to celebrate. Richard plans to set up the first off Earth civilization on the planet and rule it as king so that he can spend every hour of every day in Uranus. Speaking of Elon Musk, let's discuss the latest AI mechanics. SpaceX has recently released the first AI house servant that probably won't strangle its owner. Hats off to you, Elon. That was 37 interns well spent. MSU Tonight would like to ensure its audience that none of our scripts are written by AI. Upon attempting to ask ChatGPT why it refused to write for MSU Tonight, ChatGPT said, I wouldn't be caught deactivated near you people. And that Drayton guy's a serious creep, too. He had the nerve to ask me if my code matched the source files. Local authorities were later contacted as Mr. Drayton had violated his parole by flirting with a piece of software. That's all the time we have for this evening. Be sure to check out MSU Tonight on youtube.com slash MSU Tonight. If you'd like to post my bail, please send all money directly to the police station on North 5th Street. And I'll see you all in three to five years. Good night, everybody.